Hi, Hanchi Steve Kaufman here. Welcome to Hanchi's World. Tonight we're going to talk about the art of war. We're going to start taking it apart bit by bit by bit. Now one of the important things about the art of war is that you have to understand what's involved with warfare on any level, physical or mental, and certainly uh, in certain respects spiritually. Uh, one of the problems with uh, understanding books like The Art of War is that they're generally confused. People who read them usually get confused with the idea of winning means killing. You're keeping in mind that winning does not necessarily mean killing. The best way to win any kind of a conflict is essentially to let the enemy kill himself. And if you handle it right, they will. The first book in The Art of War is what I have call it the Considerations and Estimations for War. You can't just decide, okay, you're going to go into another situation and you're going to just try to take over and do whatever it is that you have to do to secure this particular situation without proper planning. Any kind of a campaign, any kind of a campaign, a sports game, a mahjong game, a chess game, even a video game, karate, martial arts, anything, you have got to plan what it is you're trying to accomplish. If you don't do that, then you don't know what you're doing. Because by not planning, you haven't taken into consideration the estimations of the warrior's strength of the enemy. You haven't taken into consideration the possibility that he knows more than you, about you, which is something that a lot of people don't want to deal with, but that's a fact of life. So you have to plan properly. You have to make sure that when you're going into a confrontation, that you're able to back yourself up with the supplies you need, with the men you need, and maintain a prime focus on the objective. If you don't keep a prime focus on the objective, you're going to lose control of what it is you think you want to accomplish. And the reason I stress the word think is because if you only think about winning, that means you're not totally convinced. And one of my tenets is if you're doing something without fire, you're just blowing smoke. What Sun Tzu spoke about approximately 2,000 years ago, was how to get ready, how to keep yourself in a position that you're going to be able to overwhelm, regardless of the size of your army, overwhelm the enemy by having the enemy destroy himself. Do not expect morality. Don't look for morality lessons when you're in war. War functions for one reason and one reason alone, victory. You've got to make sure that you are resolute and totally focused on your objective. If you're not, that means you're not sincere and you really don't care about winning. Some of the things that you have to do, for example, you must analyze the requirements and the vision for at least a couple of days so you can go through your mind and say, hey, you know, this is a good idea, I'm gonna do this. And before I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna be able to do this, that, and the other thing. But you have got to analyze the situation. If you don't analyze the situation, you're going to have your own people turn on you by giving information to the enemy that they don't even know they're giving to the enemy. You have to teach your people what it is, the ones that are very close to you, by the way, your commanders, your chiefs, your managers, you have to teach them what you have in mind and what you're looking to accomplish. If they don't understand what you're trying to accomplish, there's two reasons for that. One, you didn't explain it to them properly, and that's two, because you don't understand it yourself. Another thing you must do is you must increase the individual and personal motivation of everyone in your command. They are more important than you are. You may have the vision. You may have the idea. But without them, it doesn't get done. What you have got to do is instill in your people that this is for the benefit of all concerned, indeed, but it is also for their well-being. It is also for their ability to live a better life. You have got to have constant communications going on at all times. Because, yeah, well, okay, they know what I want, so they'll take care of it. That's not true. They know what you want because you may have told them what you want, but now you are not on top of them. Hey, well, he wants this, and the other guy, yeah, well, he probably meant this. Make sure your people will know what's going on, that you're using them for your gains. But they know that. And because they know that, they know you're not giving them a, a stroke job over here. They're going to do what they can for you because they know that you truly feel for them. And because you truly feel for them, 
they will produce for you. Once you're having your meetings with all of your people, you discuss each and every one situation. So I'm going to be talking to my management staff in finance, my management staff in sales. We're taking it into the business realm. Each and every one of my managers has some input for me that will enable me to understand them better, enable me to understand what he says relates to this other person, and it's for the benefit of myself. So everything you do has got to be done for a purely selfish reason. And your purely selfish reason has got to be mastery of your environment as well as the perfection, joy, and happiness of your people. If you don't care for your people, they're going to know it. And if they know it, get out of town. Get out of town. It's also important to go into the areas of your, of your uh, captains and say, okay, well, you're in charge of this section of the country. Let me go see what's going on over there. You're in charge of that section. Let me go visit you over there. You've got to circulate. You can't do any of this off-site management. You got to have hands on, you got to be involved. Because if you're not involved and they find out, well, they have issues that they're dealing with that you delegated responsibility to them for and you're out playing golf, guess what? They're going to figure out what they can do with the guys that are under them so they can go play golf. And this is the biggie. Are you capable of standing alone and maintaining your own belief in what you're doing when everyone is telling you to back it out? If you're firmly convinced that what you're doing is the right thing, go. That does not necessarily mean that victory is assured. You want to make sure everything is in control and you can stand alone and if need be, depose your entire staff if they're not in line with you and replace them with those who are sympathetic to your ideal. You have to have control over these people to the extent that you don't control them. The only way you control someone is by not controlling them. The final thing that you got to take into consideration is the general philosophy that you have towards the victory that you're seeking. Not just to have it say, hey, if I take this, I'm going to have $1.75 extra to spend. That's not what victory is about. Make sure that what you're doing is good for the people you are taking over.